mindset and how you think. Let's dive into why mindset and the way you think and the way you talk to yourself is going to be make or break in whether you succeed as a freelancer. Your mindset is going to be make or break. And I'm gonna explain why and I'm gonna explain how you can overcome some of the most common mindset issues that might be holding you back. This really is a mindset game. Any form of entrepreneurship, self-employment, creating anything, putting yourself out there is 90% mindset and just a little portion of that is actual skill. So I wanna address what's really going on in the mind of freelance writers, what's holding us back and what we can actually do about it because so much of the work that I'm doing with freelancers you know, comes down to mindset. Like I go into it thinking like, I'm gonna tell you what to do, but knowing what to do, sorry, knowing what to do is only step one. It's the mindset piece that gets the work actually done, that gets freelancers to take action, right? So we're gonna dive into a crucial part of your freelance journey, which is actually setting goals and defining your dreams, pinpointing what it is you want from your freelance business, right? And so many talented freelancers skip ahead of this. They skip this crucial step of setting goals because we have this nagging thought of, well, what if I don't achieve it? What if I have this goal and it doesn't happen? And a lot of the time we don't wanna set goals because we have this subconscious fear that it's not gonna happen and we're gonna be disappointed so we don't bother, but that's the problem. So we have to address all of our fears, our mindsets proactively. We have to address it constructively so it's not dominating our thoughts and it's not hindering us from taking action, right? Every successful freelancer, every successful entrepreneur, anyone who has ever accomplished anything has had failures and setbacks. So I want you to start viewing failure and these little setbacks, these little issues, whether it's not getting your pitch answered, whether it's taking too long on your website, whether it's feeling stuck because you just can't decide what to do. I want you to look at all of this as the price of admission and something that's almost like a rite of passage versus a sign that you're defective or broken or that this isn't for you, right? I want you to look at failures and setbacks and confusion and doubts and fears as the price of admission that you're paying in order to become a freelance copywriter, in order to become somebody who is self-employed, in order to become someone who is living a lifestyle on their own terms and has freedom and flexibility and autonomy. It's not easy. There are simple steps to take, but it is not easy because a lot of this is gonna come down to mindset and that's where a lot of us struggle and I want to address that, okay? Here's the truth. You are more capable than you realize and you need to set goals and you need to go after them doggedly. You need to have a target or else you don't know where you're going. And the number one thing that people are missing in their freelance business is a clear goal. Without that goal, you don't have a path to get there. You don't have a path to walk because all goal setting is, is choosing what you want and then working backwards to identify the steps that are needed to get there. So in my course, I teach you, okay, you want that first high paying client, here's the steps you need to take before that in order to get there. That's your website, that is your portfolio, that is your pitch. So it's n anything that feels overwhelming is not that overwhelming, you just haven't broken it down into steps into actionable, achievable, tangible, small steps to get to the big goal, okay? You're giving yourself that roadmap. By, by setting a goal, you are creating a target and you are giving yourself something to aim at, yet so many people miss this step and I want you to avoid that. I wanna show you how to set goals and how to pinpoint the obstacles that are holding you back from setting goals and taking action and doing what you need to do. And honestly, something I've realized with freelancing is that it's really not the goals that you set that are so important. So you don't need to be afraid that you're gonna fail because it's really about who you become in the process of trying to achieve that goal, right? That's it, not to sound corny, but it's not the destination, it's the journey, who you will become and the things you will achieve on your way to achieving that goal. You're gonna be stacking up so many wins and so many impressive accomplishments. So it's almost like let go of this fear of disappointment because who you're gonna become on your way to achieving that goal is gonna be so much further than where you are right now and you're gonna be amazed, but you, you first have to visualize that, right? So my recommendation is to take some time out of your day, five to 10 minutes, 
and journal and just ask yourself, what is my vision? What do I really want? And allow yourself to dream big because I'm someone who's like really realistic and grounded. So I, 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 I have an issue with maybe like dreaming big enough. What would you do if there were no limitations? Sorry, my hair is crazy. If there was no limitations, if there weren't those constraints, if you didn't think it was unrealistic, like dream really big, what would your ideal situation be? Allow yourself to dream big. What's that that vision that's gonna keep you motivated throughout your journey so that you continue to take the steps you need? And I have a few questions that I think will be really helpful for you to think about, right? How many hours do you wanna work per day? Okay, when you have a nine to five job, that's already set for you. When you're a freelancer, that's for you to decide. How many hours do you wanna work per day? I know as a freelance writer, there's only so many good hours you really can have in the day. So I put all of my most important, I guess like brain work, stuff that really requires me to focus and think, I stack that in the beginning of the day and then I leave admin tax tasks and other autopilot tasks for the end of the day. But as a writer, you're probably only gonna get a few hours of really good solid writing before your brain starts to turn to mush, right? Do you wanna have a team or do you wanna work by yourself? What's your vision? You know, What's the ideal work situation that you want for yourself? Do you see yourself working with a, an agency? Do you eventually wanna scale your business big enough to be working with other people? Do you want a partner? Do you want an assistant? Do you wanna to outsource to other freelance writers? Think about your ideal situation. I know you might not know how to do those things right now, but think about what's your ideal work scenario or do you just wanna work alone, alone, alone with nobody, okay? What is the income goal you wanna be hitting? That's key, that's like very basic ABC, one, two, three. We have to set an income goal before we even start pitching, before we pick our niche, all of that stuff. You need to pick an income goal. And what I like to do as a realist is do good, better, and best goals. I just learned that in a business coaching program that I'm in where she had us set our revenue goals of good, better, best. So this would be okay, the middle would be better, and then this would be the best case scenario. And that felt very good for me because I'm like, even if I hit my good goal, I will be happy. What kind of work do you want to be doing? Do you want to be writing? Do you want to be getting on calls? Do you want to be working with a team? Do you want to be that one who's iterating ideas with the team? How involved do you want to be with your clients? Do you really just want a hands-off role? What's your favorite part of being a freelance copywriter? Is it the research? Is it the writing? Get really into like what you really like and enjoy doing. Even if it's not an exact word, say to yourself, I really like to be in a room with a cup of coffee doing hours of research or I want to be sitting at my desk with my treadmill desk and watching videos and learning and research. What do you like to do? Sit there and allow yourself to envision what you like doing best. How much vacation time do you want? Okay, this is key. How much time off do you need? How much time off do you want? Because that will help you understand what type of business you want to go into and, and what type of work you want to be doing. Just dream, how much time off would you like for vacation if it was up to you of like, I, I know how many trips I wanna take per year. I know for me personally, I'm not a big vacation person, but my fiance very much is, so vacation time isn't a huge motivator for me, but it could be for other people who, if you really like traveling and this is really important to you, that is your value. Get clear on that. How much vacation time do you wanna be taking? Take time to dream, okay? This is big for me. What type of lifestyle do you want to live? So I'm pretty in the know. I'm very clear on what I believe, you know, would make me most happy in terms of the lifestyle. I know what I want my home to look like. I know the feeling I want when it comes to making a big purchase. I know how stressed out or not stressed out I want to be about making investments. I have a lot of like visualizations of like, hey, I'm going to invest in this. I'm going to buy this. My kitchen is going to look like this. And that's, I'm going to be making this amount of money that making those decisions is not going to stress me. If I need help in my business and I want to outsource something, I don't want to feel stress when I go to make that decision. Okay. So that's getting a bit into money mindset work, which is a whole other topic. But like what type of house do you want? What type of lifestyle do you want to live? How much time do you want to spend with your family? These are all ways that you can get big, get get clear on your big vision. Okay. Having a vision is so important. I see Ephraim's on the call. Love that you mentioned about lifestyle. <laughs> hey Ephraim, so good to see you, my friend. Here's the other thing. Okay. So 
once you have your big vision goal, your next step is going to be breaking down that big goal into what steps are needed to get to the big goal. So I have a video on YouTube where I share with you how I use the project management software Asana. It is free. And I took a course called Up Level with Asana by Louise Henry that I always am talking about and I'm always promoting because it really helped me to get organized and get clear. To be honest with you, I was so overwhelmed with all the responsibilities in my business that I was about to give up. I felt like I just don't know what's the next step to take. I don't know what to do next. I feel paralyzed. I feel like there's so many different decisions. And taking that course with Louise really put things into perspective. It helped me get all of my business into this free project management software called Asana. It is how I not only organize now my business, it's how I organize my life. I plan my meals in Asana. I plan my workouts in Asana. All of my to-do are in there and being organized is like the most underrated personal development hack, business hack, success hack, money hack. It is so underrated because a lot of the time we just have too much going on in our heads and it doesn't allow us to think clearly, okay? So using a project management software like Asana, you can take that big goal and break down in list form what steps you need to take to get to the big goal and that's really key. I definitely recommend you check out my YouTube video about setting freelance income goals and how I use Asana to break that out, okay? Here's the other part. Once you have your big goal, once you've gotten clear on your vision, once you kind of understand what steps you need to take in order to get to that vision, the next thing you're, you're going to want to do is surround yourself with positivity because this is where a lot of people go wrong. They don't even realize that a lot of the input that they are consuming because we're now so bombarded with media and social media and TV and books and just information. We have a lot of information and media flying at us. There's a lot of consumption going on. I know I'm really guilty of that. I think I spend like 12 hours a day on YouTube. I need like rehab. <laughs> but if what you are seeing isn't inspiring you and isn't making you feel like you're capable of achieving your goals, or maybe it's making you jealous, or maybe it's making you compare yourself, or maybe it's making you feel like those goals are so far away, that's a key indicator that you need to listen to your body and stop looking at stuff that bogs you down. Stop talking to people who don't speak life into you. Stop consuming clickbait YouTube videos, anything political, anything negative. I know for me, I've had to really be careful about the stuff I consume on YouTube because the negative headlines and the clickbait titles and like the teardown videos where somebody's doing like a reaction video, it's entertaining and it fulfills something in me where I get to, I guess, like quench my third, my curiosity, but then I walk away feeling bad. And the reason we walk away feeling bad, even when we watch things that we like, is because we know that if that person had made a video about us or said this stuff about us and we watch somebody criticizing someone and tearing them down, we know we wouldn't want to be on the end of that, right? We know that, we know that that negativity would, we wouldn't want to have that done to us. So even though we might enjoy watching other people get torn down, it makes us fearful that, wow, if I put myself out there, if I become somebody who's public online, I could be subject to this like cancel culture or this tear down culture. So really like take an inventory and listen to your body and get a sense for how things make you feel. When people, when you hang out with people, how do they make you feel? what do you walk away feeling do you feel like your battery was filled up and you're you're excited about life after you're done with that person or do you feel like you need to go into like a, a spa and recoup and heal and get your energy back from dealing with this person some people just have a, a draining taking energy that really drains us and makes us feel like shit. and unless you get really in tune with your body and how you're feeling you're going to keep going around people like that. You're going to tell yourself, you're going to you're going to blame yourself. Oh my god, why do I feel so tired? Why do I feel so anxious? Why do I feel so negative? Well, it's because something triggered that. You didn't pick up on it and you just kept plowing through trying to be that normal person and you don't realize that these people are draining of your energy. So, even with freelancing and with online content, if you see somebody, even if they just seem to be killing it and that makes you feel less than somehow, unfollow or mute them it doesn't mean they're doing anything wrong it doesn't mean you hate them it doesn't mean you have to you know it doesn't mean they're 
it doesn't mean anything negative. It's just you filtering everything you consume and only focusing on the material and the resources and the media that makes you feel good, that makes you feel like your goals are within reach, and that really, really motivate motivates you, right? So let's talk about the common mindset issues because I think a lot of people, they do know what's holding them back. Like they know, they're like, yeah, I, I understand. Like I, I know I'm stuck in procrastination. I know that I have imposter syndrome. I know I don't feel good enough. So the problem is though, we need to hold up these mindset issues and we need to hold them to the light and we need to examine them because then they'll lose their power and we need to question them because I mean, even just CBT, if you've been in therapy, you kind of understand this concept of, or even if you've been in coaching, like I know a lot of life coaches do exercises like this. You take a belief and you hold it up to the light and you say, is it true? And if it's true, what can I do about it? Am I looking at this in the most clear way? Is this accurate? Oh, I feel like I'm not good enough. Is this accurate? Might not be, right? So I want to explain to you the most common mindset issues that are going on with freelancers because in my course 30 days to paid i'm working with these mindset issues every single day like i said it's not just having the steps it's having the faith that you should be taking those steps and that those steps are going to pay off that's what gets you into action so i want you to know that if you resonate with these mindset issues that i'm bringing up you're not broken you're not deficient there's not something wrong with you you're actually having a shared experience that we all go through okay you're not broken you're not deficient we all go through this so tell me if this sounds familiar okay i would say there's two common mindsets that are holding us back from succeeding as freelancers number one is a confidence a worthiness and a comparison problem so a lot of writers have fallen into kind of what i call the upwork trap you got on upwork you got some gigs They're not high paying gigs, they're not ongoing gigs, they're not high quality experiences, but you've been there ever since, you're trapped there. And at this point, you're tired of working for people that you don't believe value copywriting and are paying you what you're worth, okay? So that's one. The other thing is that you find it hard to sell yourself. So you want the confidence to believe that you can actually carve this space for yourself as a freelance copywriter. You wanna break into this industry. You've been taking baby steps, but you realize like this isn't enough. And you, you're you thinking maybe it's time for me to take a leap instead of just taking these baby steps. Now here's the second mindset issue. You're stuck, you're confused, and you just kind of feel alone drifting out to sea, okay? Maybe you haven't stayed consistent. It's like you find yourself getting started, but then you stop. You're jumping from one method to another. Someone throws out a new strategy and all of a sudden you're on to the next thing, right? It's like you just ditched what you were doing in order to chase after some type of shiny object syndrome. So you don't have one specific mentor. You are jumping from free video to free video to free video. And although it seems like you're getting good value for free, you just wind up more confused than you were before you even started. Okay. So it's like Chinese food where, or any carb rich food where you are hungry you know, an hour later, even though you stuffed your face, it's because you didn't get the actual nutrients, you didn't get what you needed, so now you're back to square one and you need more information, right? You have a deep knowing that this is for you, right? Like you wouldn't be here, you wouldn't be pursuing this copywriting journey if you didn't believe that in some capacity you were capable of this, you know that this is for you, you just need help getting started, okay? You need that mentorship, you need that professional community of people who are on the same journey and understand those values. And trust me, I had zero people in real life, so I had to go online and find people. That's why I love my community that I have, because other writers get to talk to each other and say, yes, like we're taking these steps together, here's my pitch. Nobody understands what you're doing unless you're surrounded by a community of like-minded people who are also trying to accomplish what you are trying to accomplish. A lot of people don't even understand what freelance copywriting is. (laughs) Okay. They're like, copywriting, is that when you copyright and have like a trademark situation? Are you a lawyer? (laughs) Now, you might have dove headfirst into learning and you're like deep in the YouTube rabbit holes, you're deep in free courses or something, but you just don't feel ready to start. Maybe someone online has told you, you need to constantly practice every day and you need to what is it, the handwriting thing a lot of people are talking about? You should be writing copy by hand. You have to stay in learning mode for months before you even think of getting out there and doing something. So 
it leaves you feeling like you're never ready enough. You don't know enough. You've never learned enough. You've never gotten the skills. There's going to be some imaginary unicorn point in the future where you finally feel ready once you've learned enough, okay? So let's start busting these myths, okay? You don't need more practice and you don't need more studying and you don't need more preparation before you get out there and get started and take action, okay? There's this story of like, I'll be ready when I just learn a little bit more. And it is a fallacy. Successful freelancers obviously spend time honing their craft and learning, but the difference is, is that they act before they feel ready. They take action versus being in this passive learning mode. So I'll just give you a prime example. My student, Chantel, she was someone who literally was on the verge of giving up on copywriting because she was learning so much on YouTube and people were telling her, you need to you know, study for months and learn this and do this. She just wanted a clear roadmap of how to get started because she was balancing her children, her kids, her responsibility, everything. And she's like, well, at this rate, if I have to keep doing all of this practicing, if I have to keep doing all of this learning, when am I going to be able to do this? How is this realistic? I don't have the time to be doing that. So when she enrolled in 30 Days to Paid, it was like she had the roadmap and she had the steps she needed and she realized she didn't need to know everything before she got started. And that was a huge relief for Chantel. You can check out my YouTube video where I interview her and ask her about how she had her success as a freelance copywriter. But she specifically says in the video, it was such a relief knowing that I didn't need to know everything. I just needed to take the steps and then I would learn what I needed to learn as I went. Okay, and she's someone who I consider my biggest success in the course because she wound up not only landing these high paying clients, even though she had no writing experience, she actually wound up taking a full time job and moving her entire family across the country to take a job as a content writer full time in house, which I know we're all here to do freelancing, but this is something that happened to me too. I got scouted as a freelancer. I got offered a full time role. It didn't work out for me, but I know it's going to work out for her because she's just such a smart girl and she'll figure it out. But I want to use her as an, an inspiration, as somebody who literally just needed that step-by-step -step guidance and then figured everything out as she went and pulled it off despite having no experience. Now, here's the other myth. So, and I want you to understand that this isn't true. You don't need to be super experienced. You don't need to be an expert to command high rates off the bat. You can start charging what you're worth right now, even in the midst of your imposter syndrome. You might feel like a fraud and like I'm not experienced enough and there's no way, but you can start charging high rates now. Because if you get one high paying opportunity, you will, a you will be able to rinse and repeat that to get multiple high paying opportunities and then it results in a full time income. That's exactly what I did. That is the method I teach in my course and that is what other people do as well. So I wanna read to you a message I got from one of my students, Matthew, okay? He faced a lot of unanswered DMs, a lot of silence, a lot of discouraging attempts until he finally landed that first high paying opportunity. And he got on a call with a client. They wanted him to write an ebook. He proposed the price of 750 pounds. I don't know what that is USD, but it's pretty similar. <laughs> he knew immediately because the client was like, yes, let's do this. He was like, shit, I undersold myself. He knew at that moment that the fact that the client, that's, a, that's something I teach in my course. If somebody is agreeing really readily to your first price without some pushback, that means you could have went a little bit higher. But he was dealing with low paying writing gigs up until that point. And then he finally gets this answer from this client, gets on a call and pitches a $750 ebook, okay? So I wanna to read to you what he said. Just got off a call with a client and made the sale. It's a $1,500 word report slash ebook for a tutoring company and they were happy to pay 750 pounds. He accepted that figure straight away, which made me realize I had undersold myself. Oh well, he said they needed other content and would like to chat about that in a few weeks, so that's good. Anyway, without 30 days to pay it in your confident cold pitch structure, I would not have gotten this client. All I can say is keep going. I have only landed my first proper client and I started trying to get clients in April or earlier. I was only super focused on it from May and until a few weeks ago, I felt like giving up. I was so downhearted about the whole thing and I didn't believe it was possible. I was sending so many DMs and nothing. All I can say is keep going. And then he said, I said, congrats, this is amazing, blah, blah. He said, thanks so much. This has really impacted my mindset. I know I can actually get clients now, whereas before I had to accept it on faith. 
So that's the beauty of getting your first high paying client in 30 days is that once you have that proof that it is possible, it really is a matter of rinse and repeat, okay? Here's the other myth. You don't have to stay on Upwork. This is another myth busting. You don't have to stay on Upwork. You don't have to continue to work for low paying clients because you feel like, oh, I should just be lucky to be getting this one client. You can earn more, but you have to believe you're worth it first. And that's a belief and a mindset thing. So I want to share with you Enrico. Again, if you want to go to my YouTube channel, I interviewed Enrico and asked him about his results in the course, his experience, where he was, where he got. He enrolled because he wanted to work on his confidence and mindset and demanding more and charging more. That was his issue, okay? Because a lot of people are enrolling in 30 Days to Paid my course, not just to learn the basics of how to set yourself up, but it's like, oh, no, 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 I've gotten some clients under my belt. I need to understand how to get these higher paying opportunities because all of our goals as all of our, what our goals should be as freelancers is to work for less and make more, meaning let's get the absolute most out of the clients we're working for. Let's command the highest rate so that we're only working with a handful of clients. And that's not a dishonesty thing of like, work less, make more, and like, it's not about that. It's how can you focus on a handful of clients and provide this really awesome experience to those clients because you're not bombarded with all these other clients and driving yourself crazy with all these different writing assignments. So this is what Enrico said. Clients will try to hustle us and pay us as little po as little as possible, but I would always end up negotiating my rates down. But now I'm learning to stand my ground and get what I'm worth. The mindset shift to knowing my worth and pricing myself accordingly has been a huge improvement in my business. So thank you, Christine, for pushing me and helping me to gain the confidence to do that. Just an experience I wanted to share. So that made me really happy, right? Because we all kind of get stuck in that low paying client mode where we are, we're just saying, oh, well, I should just be happy to get what I have, right? I shouldn't demand more. But you need to raise your own self-worth in order to command more. Let me go through these questions because I wanna make sure that I'm interacting with you guys. Let me know if you have any questions because I'm happy to chat with you and you get this free little Q&A session. I feel copywriters do so many things, like my to-do list is three tasks, learning, sending cold pitches, and writing copy. That's good. You really want to have like, it's so true. Like there are a lot of moving pieces, but you need to know which activities drive business forward and what has the biggest result. And if you can prioritize effectively, you're, you're in like a really great position. Frame said, yes, paid courses are more organized and systematic as well. Yeah. That's the thing too. It's, it's a commitment thing. Like this year, I invested so much in my business because I just wanted to level up. So like I invested in a $10,000 coaching program, which to me was like an insane amount of money. And I actually remember before she revealed the price of the program, I was like, I'm not paying anything past eight because that would be insane for me. And then I was like, she, she, she asked for 10 and I was like, I'm doing it because I'm the type of person where if I invest in myself, I'm getting my money's worth and I am doing every, I'm showing up, I'm going to be consistent. And I really do think the most dedicated people are the ones that have something on the line. They have skin in the game. It's why I don't give my course away for free because I actually have given it away for free and done like the scholarship thing and tried to help people out. And I swear to you, those are the people that never even looked at the course because they didn't appreciate it. They didn't have that skin in the game. The handwriting suggestion seems promising. Yeah, and that's cool if you feel that you need to do that. I do find though that most people are ready to start freelance copywriting. They just need to create their own samples, get out there, start pitching and learn on the go. It's really hard to learn anything in marketing, sales, copywriting. It's really hard to learn in theory. You need to get out there and get the feedback. You need to see, did it work? Did the response rates come? Are the open rates there? Is the client happy? If you're just sitting there creating your own samples, there's very little you can learn from that. How do I know I'm ready to get started? I'm new and I never wrote copy before. So I had never written copy before either, other than like sales emails that I was doing when I was in my sales profession. But if you know how to write a high school essay, then you know how to write a blog post. You just need to format it, obviously, in a way that is an actual blog. But if you understand how to write an introduction, a body, and a conclusion, and you, you know, you can write, that's really what you need. It's not as complicated as a lot of people make it out to be. 
I bought How to Write Copy That Sells, and it's a helpful start, too. Yes, it's a great book. I love Ray Edwards, How to Write Copy That Sells. It is a definitely a good book, but I'll say this. Copywriting books tend to be geared toward business owners, right? So that's the problem with copywriting books. They are teaching business owners who have created a product how to market their product and how to position it. And as a copywriter, as a freelance content writer, copywriter, that can be very confusing because you will be marketing and copywriting for someone else's product that you need to know inside and out. So I have a list of copywriting books that I recommend. It's a blog post. I'll maybe throw that in the link in my stories after this. Someone, oh, copy co said, but I, but I, there should be mistakes through the journey and failure. Shouldn't my first copies for a client be so bad that the client will ask for a refund? So personally for me, the type of clients I deal with, there's no such thing as a refund. They get what they get. But I will say this, having clients be unhappy with you and tear your work apart and fire you is a part of that rite of passage I spoke about earlier. I have had clients not like my work. We did a coaching session with Amy Leisner in 30 Days to Paid Community, and she kind of discussed how you should separate yourself from, separate your ego from the bad feedback that you receive because writing is kind of a subjective thing. People could just not like your style. Like it's not a math test where you're getting graded of like, oh, you either got a 90 or you you didn't get a passing grade. It's like, it's a, a lot of it is, up to the client's discretion. So that's why I really focus on my course on soft skills, on communication, because once you can kind of understand that clients liking you and enjoying working with you is just as important as like the final product that you deliver, you understand kind of that this is an ecosystem. This isn't just about like, did you deliver a good copy? This is like, are you an enthusiastic service provider that they want to continue to work with, that they know they can mentor, that they can grow with you? All of this stuff comes into play. <laughs> Barney's offline said, as an aspiring B2B SaaS niche writer, how many or what kind of samples do I need to get started? So I would recommend having three to four samples in your portfolio. I don't think you should go crazy doing a ton of different samples. And the type of samples you should choose are based on what you want to be hired for. So if you want to write blogs, you should have blogs in your portfolio. If you want to write emails, you should have emails in your portfolio. You also want to go on their website and see the type of content that they're prioritizing. And you want to see the type of content that has a continual need. At least that's the strategy that I take. Personally, I shy away from for example, website copy, because those are just short-term pro projects or one-off projects. Like people rewrite their website and redesign their website like once every couple years max. It's a big lift. So it just depends, I think, what you prefer. Because some copywriters really like those one-off projects where they can make a lot of money. I think for me, I'm much more of like a stable, sustainable person where I'd rather do recurring blog work, recurring email, stuff that I know is continual and that'll give me a steady, predictable stream of income, definitely check out my website, or sorry, my YouTube video about retainer packages to understand like how to pitch ongoing work, but it really depends. So in terms of what you should put in your portfolio, it's like, what do you want to be writing? Because you need to showcase that so that you get those opportunities. And then you have to understand what type of content and copywriting that client needs because you're fulfilling a need that they have. What makes copywriting a very special niche? Well, I will just explain how to make or, or why copywriting is such a lucrative, incredible experience for people to pursue to make freelance income and become self employed. Copywriting is something that every business needs. Every business. Every business that makes money needs to communicate to a customer what they do, how they do it, and give them instructions about how to buy, motivate them to buy, increase brand awareness. So there is way more need for copywriters than there are copywriters that exist. So that's people don't understand that because with AI and with a lot of people online marketing themselves as copywriters, it might seem like it's super saturated. It's not. There's so much need for it. Copywriting is amazing because it's not like fiction writing or writing books. It is very much so a psychology and persuasion game. It's understanding what triggers people to make a decision to buy. It's tapping into people's fears, desires, dreams, pain points. It's understanding what motivates someone to take an action. It's understanding 
the problems that people have and how they can use products and solutions to overcome those problems. So it's sales, it's marketing, it's persuasion. It's not the typical form of writing that many people are used to and accustomed to. And I think that confusion where people are like, well, I don't know if I'm a good enough writer is very, it's very much so a misconception because you don't need to be this prolific writer. You don't need to be the next Stephen King or you don't need to write poetry. You don't need to make it pretty. It's a matter of did you communicate clearly and did you get the point across the way you needed to? Did it work or didn't it? It's very kind of, you know, did you communicate clearly? Someone said, have you ever done copywriting for realtors? No, I haven't done real estate copywriting. But, you know, if you have questions about that, let me know. I'm happy to walk you through it because they definitely have like a different type of copy need. Barney said, thanks. I'm really interested in writing blogs. Yeah, that is always where I recommend that writers get started. And that was my last question. So if any questions, please feel free to pop them into the chat so I can answer any questions you have. But blog writing and content writing is how I really got my foot in the door. I believe that it is a like lower commitment deliverable to offer because you don't need to know a ton about the client's product, about their offer in order to write a really good piece of content. When you get more into emails and websites, more the conversion copywriting, you need to kind of have a very in-depth understanding about the product, about the audience. So content is just such an amazing way to get your foot in the door. A lot of clients are willing to give a content writer that they don't know a chance versus like handing over their emails to somebody that doesn't know their brand. So I think that's the cheat code and that's really how I got my foot in the door. I don't think I've ever actually straight up pitched a client on direct response copywriting. I've always, unless they come to me for a specific need, which that happens all the time. If your LinkedIn profile is filled out correctly, you're gonna have clients coming to you asking you, hey, do you do this? And of course you just say yes and figure it out later. But with pitching, I always do some type of content play. It's always, you know, do you want blogs? Do you want an ebook? Oh, you want a blog? You want an ebook? Let's talk about how you're going to promote that asset. And that's really how I upsell and get those opportunities. My whole strategy really is getting in with a client and then continuing to build that relationship. And I think that's why my approach is a little bit different than a lot of the advice out there because. I'm focused on sustainability, on growing your relationship with one client so that you are making your life as a copywriter easier. You're focused on one person's brand. You're getting recurring assignments from one client. You're raising your rates with one client instead of constantly juggling all these different clients and hustling for gigs and starting this project and then it ends and then it's the feast and famine cycle. So there's a lot of things we can do as writers in terms of how we position ourselves, in terms of the services we offer, the packages, the deliverables. It's like how we come up with our offer is so key in terms of our experience and our day-to-day -day and what our workload looks like, right? Because if I'm working for three clients at once, my life is just so much easier than juggling six clients with all those deadlines, right? So we want to really, like I said at the beginning of this session, set the income goal first and then work backward because once you have the income goal, you would say, hmm, well, to reach that income goal, I'm going to need to work with five clients. And if I'm going to work with five clients, that's my max, how much am I going to have to charge that client? And then you can really get the wheels turning, the gears moving of how you're going to make that income. How are you going to market yourself? What are you going to offer? What niche are you going to choose where you can command those rates? But it all starts with setting the goal first and then working backward. Love how you highlighted the idea of how sustainable copywriting is as freelance work. Yes. Hello there. Hey, Matthew. My student Matthew is in the course. How you doing? What do you think about ghostwriting? I am a ghostwriter. <laughs> I get no credit for anything I write on the internet. So I ghostwrite executive thought leadership for CEOs and high level people. I do LinkedIn posts for them. I will write thought, thought leadership articles in their voice. Everything I do as a copywriter and content writer is ghostwriting. Practically nothing is attributed to my name. I think in a lot of ways this has held me back maybe from getting my name out there and building my personal brand. But the way I look at it is like 
if I get the money and I get paid for it, I don't need the credit. If this person needs a writer that's going to do this, I want their money. I'm going to take their money and they can put, you know, put their work out there and say that they did it, right? So ghostwriting is amazing. Depends what type of ghostwriting you're going to offer. Some people do book ghostwriting. I do thought leadership ghostwriting, blog ghostwriting. There was another question. Barney said, in your opinion, how long do you think the copywriting space will remain lucrative to newcomers, especially with all recent innovations in technology? I think it is as viable as ever. It's just the only difference with AI is that you need to stand out and you need to offer something that a generalist cannot offer because that's what ChatGPT is capable of. So it doesn't matter if you're new. It matters if you have a specialty and if you've positioned yourself correctly in the market. If you have a niche, that's something no one can take away from you. If you have a specialty and you have this background of completing work for clients within one industry no robot can replicate replicate that and i'm somebody who uses chat gpt every single day i'm very into ai i'm a component of ai well you know not of it destroying humanity but i'm a component of making my life easier and i don't think that it is as much of a threat and i think we're on that downward point where people are starting to realize that it was very overhyped in terms of how it will replace copywriters. Is it overhyped of how it's gonna impact society and jobs? No, there's a lot of implications societally that happen with AI. I think it's it's a whole can of worms, but is it, are, are my clients even talking about AI to me? No, they have not found a way to implement it in their day to day to the point where they could replace a copywriter with it. And I'm somebody who's on the ground and experiencing all this stuff. and. The reason why there was a slowdown was because of our economy, at least if you're in the US, and I'm sure our economy in the US does ripple out into other economies as well. A lot of copywriters and freelance copywriters experienced a very slow summer because of tightening budgets, because of fear, because of what's going on with our economy. So we're under one of the worst economies right now. How did you get into ghostwriting from copy? So this is a good question. My whole strategy with clients is to try to understand their business and pitch them additional services, right? So if I am assigned an ebook, my next question, because I understand the whole content marketing sphere and how these companies run their marketing departments, it's easy for me to say, hey, you asked me to write this ebook, but how are you promoting the ebook? How are you getting it out there? How are you gonna get this in front of your audience? And that leads to a conversation of, oh, well, we put it on our landing page. Oh, who's writing your landing page? I wanna do that. Oh, well, we're gonna probably promote it a little bit on social. Who's writing your social posts? I can do that. <laughs> so it's actually in the client's best interest to have the same writer who's doing the ebook also write the landing page, also write the emails, also write the social posts because that's the writer that's already putting in that work and getting familiar with the brand and the offer. It just makes sense. It's it's also less, you know, things for that content manager or that marketing manager. It's less things for the client to juggle. They don't need to, you know, communicate all these different assignments to all these different people. You can have one person do multiple writing assignments, but in order for you as a freelancer to pitch that, you need to understand their overall marketing strategy and not in like a weird like you need to be a marketing genius and have intel it's like no there's just obvious questions when you understand what their goals are so if they're writing an ebook you have to ask yourself what's their goal well their goal is to have people download that ebook and nurture them as a lead and eventually that lead turns into a sale so oh i just realized i have to go pick up my groceries i'm gonna try to sorry guys i do like my online grocery pickup <laughs> Someone said, yeah, even I believe AI makes my work better. It's more of a friend to me than a threat. That's amazing. Do you think having a niche is important? That's what Tracy said. Absolutely. I am very, very adamant that having a niche is important. I think it's the key to survival. I think it's the key to having a targeted approach and understanding who to reach out to. If somebody tells me, hey, I just don't know who to pitch, I know they haven't chosen a niche because when you know your niche, you have such a 
a, a roadmap, this like targeted list of people to reach out to, you have so much clarity. So it's not even so much like, yes, you become an expert and you become the go-to writer within that industry, but it's also to give you a path forward because you'll have direction. You're not going and pitching every, you know, oh, health this day, fitness this day, technology this day, makeup this day, clothes this day. You're not jumping from thing to thing because you know you're only targeting companies within this little sphere. And it doesn't limit you the way a lot of writers think. They think it's gonna limit them. Oh, if I niche down, I'm only gonna be available to certain clients. You'd be shocked that once you just put yourself out there and market yourself to a certain demographic, so many similar adjacent industries will come to you. Like for example, I'm a software technology writer, but then I have marketing technology companies and Wi-Fi marketing companies all there's just so many different companies out there in the market so like if you are a health and wellness writer in the holistic space maybe you'll have a supplement company reach out to you maybe you'll have a testosterone company reach out to you like you have no idea how many different sub niches are within that niche that will still look at your experience as relevant and consider you for the opportunity so having a niche is huge huge right with Whitney, <laughs> you were on the live yesterday. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Is your coaching community active? I think you have a private group. Yes. Yeah, so as soon as you join 30 Days to Paid, you get instant access to a private group where you can drop your portfolio, your website, your pitch, anything you need help and feedback on. You get direct access to me where I can provide that mentorship in the group. We have a lot of fun challenges going on in the group. And then the other cool thing is I do a monthly live call where we take a deeper dive into certain aspects of the course, right? So I have five modules that cover a number of different aspects of freelance copywriting. It's like how to create your portfolio and your website, then it's how to get on LinkedIn, then it's how to create your pitch, then it's how to get on a call with clients. So I cover all that stuff, but then I do this monthly call where we take a deeper dive. Okay, so what, what part of your website are we gonna work on this month? Your about page, we'll take a deep dive into your about page, right? So it's the private community you get instant access to. I would love to see you in there, Whitney. I wanna niche down, but when I look at agencies and some individual copywriters provide so many things, how do they do that? <coughs> well. I don't niche down by deliverable. So in the beginning, I was that writer that kind of offered every single service. I was like, oh yeah, I'll do blogs, I'll do knowledge. I just recorded a video about this. My mistake and what I wish I did a little bit earlier as a copywriter, even though I understood choosing a niche, I did that right. I was only in the technology space. I said, I will do everything. I actually don't regret it because I learned a lot, but like I was writing knowledge based articles. I was doing technical writing. I was doing, all this stuff that I really didn't need to do or want to do, but it was good, I guess, because I got the experience, but I wish I had niched down by deliverable and said like, hey, I'm just a case study writer. I'm just a blog writer. I'm just an email. Now I have just a couple of services that I offer. So I focus on blog. This is just me personally. And if you go to that retainer video I told you about on YouTube, you'll see I like list out how I create my packages and price them and how you can do it. Use it, you know, use Canva, do it for free. I only write blogs ebooks, which in my niche are called gated assets, email sequences, and maybe like social posts, even though I try to avoid that. And I love case studies as well. So I would say I'm predominantly a content writer in terms of where my income comes from. I would say email marketing is where I get more into the direct response. If I do social posts, I would say that's more direct response, but I don't offer everything. I actually turn down requests that I get. I don't write white papers. I don't write knowledge-based articles. I don't do technical writing. I don't do press releases. How do you know which companies fall within my niche that I can reach out to? Or rather, how do I know for sure that companies are in the same space as me when doing preliminary research? I'm not sure what you mean by that, but there's definitely ways to look at companies online and understand what it is they're offering and whether or not they line up with your niche. So Barney's, if you could just talk to me about what you're, I think you said you were B2B technology, right? So I would start my search with a well-known technology directory such as Crunchbase or just a Google search of like top tech companies. And that's this list building process where you're basically going out and you're finding which companies exist in your space. Now, once you get those names of companies, 
then you have to understand, hmm, how do I know that they need a copywriter or a content writer? And I think that might be what you're talking about. It's like, how do you know whether they're a good company to pitch? And I have a whole module on that in the course where I walk you through and say, here's some telltale signs to look for. Like, for example, how big is the company? Are they producing content? Do they have a blog? When you go on their website, do they try to get your email address with a pop-up? Do they have a resources tab, right? You have to understand what content they're putting out. There's ways to look at what ads companies are writing. Let's just say you wanted to do Facebook ads. You would go into those directories and see what ads they're running. You understand like what their marketing strategy is by looking at the existing content that they have online. And when you look at what they're publishing, then you can say, oh, okay, they're most likely using a copywriter or content writer. And if it's enough content, like if it's like a regularly published blog, if they're really big into email marketing, if they're constantly putting on like webinars or something, you look at this content production and say, there's a good chance that they will have a need for additional writing work. And as you continue to analyze companies and get some success and traction, you'll start to pinpoint intuitively, oh, this looks like a good company and this doesn't. So I'll give you a prime example. I stopped working for really, really early stage startups. So one of the best ways to like get your foot in the door and get a yes from a client is to pitch like an early stage tech startup company. So I'm specifically speaking to you because you're in tech, right? There's startup companies where they're like really just figuring out their messaging. They probably only have like under 50 customers. They, an early stage startup maybe has series A or series B funding. Those early stage companies are a really good way to like get your foot in the door with blog content and other needs. But in terms of copywriting projects that involve getting on the phone with them and maybe creating their website, pardon me, I won't do that anymore because they're just so disorganized and don't have their stuff figured out. So it's a double edged sword because startup companies are like a great target because they're willing to give you a chance even if you're inexperienced because they just need the help but then the experience can sometimes be messy if they don't have their stuff together Rose said can i work on a few niches and then pick up my niches is a good idea yeah that's the thing and i said this yesterday too you can have multiple niches but just make sure you're making it clear that you do have specialties and that you're not just a generalist writer Right, with Whitney said, their whole identity is in growth phase. Yes, for sure. So it's cool because sometimes you can get in on the ground floor and be that person that helps them flesh out their brand identity. But then there's just some messiness that I've experienced with those companies because they don't have their stuff figured out yet. So it's a hit or miss. But hey, thank you so much for joining me on this call. I'm running a free five day workshop in the next couple weeks. It's actually September 11th. So please monitor your inbox. Make sure that you are receiving my emails because if you are, you will be able to join that free workshop. I'm going to do a pop up free community. It's going to be really cool. I'm so excited for this free five day workshop because we're going to go over mindset. We're going to go over crafting your freelance value proposition. We're going to talk about pitching. We're going to do all of this fun stuff. And I have a workbook that you can actually go and do the work. So make sure you're getting my emails. It's my only request for you because then you could opt into this free workshop. Make sure you're subscribed to me on YouTube. I'm really happy to be here with you guys. I really appreciate you giving me your time and attention, asking me your questions. Ephraim said free live workshop, yes. Ephraim is my virtual assistant and helper and just godsend who helps me with these amazing graphics and is helping me put on this workshop. So thank God for Ephraim, such a blessing to be working with him and finally getting assistance in my freelance business. Have an amazing day, everyone. Message me if you have any questions. I have to go pick up my Wegmans order and get my Friday started. I hope you have an amazing weekend. I saw Corey just joined. Hi, Corey. That's my childhood best friend. This See, if this was a couple of months ago or like a year ago, I would be freaking out to be live and have someone I know join the live. So I've come such a long way. Have a great weekend, everybody. Ephraim said free five-day workshop. Yay. See ya.